السلام علیکم آئی ایم سید محمد صفی العالم نقوی تو ہمارا رول نمبر از ون ڈبل سیون زیرو پی پی ون ڈبل سیون زیرو ون فائیو ٹو اینڈ دا ٹاپک آف مائی پریزنٹیشن واز وائرل انفیکشنز اینڈ دا سب ٹاپک آن وچ آئی ہیو ٹو پریزنٹ از انفلوئنزا وائرس So beginning with this influenza virus, we all know that influenza virus is a highly contagious viral infection of the nose, throat and lungs that occurs most often in the late fall. <coughs> Sorry ma'am, ma'am, it's been days that I'm suffering from hiccups. I don't know the reason. That's why. Most often in late fall. fall, winter and early springs. Influenza is a serious infection that affects between 5 to 20% of the US population and annually. During 2017 and 2018 season, an estimated 9 lakh individuals were hospitalized due to this virus and 80,000 deaths occurred. It was just uh, an introduction about influenza virus. Incubation period is about two days but ranges from one to four days. Over here I have also given the structure of this influenza virus. So one could see it, <laughs> though it's related to microbiology. There are four types of seasonal influenza viruses. All four types of type A, B, C and D. Influenza A, B viruses circulate and cause seasonal epidemics of this disease. Influenza A viruses are further divided into subtypes depending upon the combination of hemagglutin and neura, neuraminidase. And A currently circulating in human are the subtype A, H1N1 and A, H3. N2 influenza virus on influenza virus type A are known to have caused pandemics so it's clear that B, C and D are not that much virulent as that of A and uh, type D influenza virus doesn't affect humans it primarily affects cattle now here epidemiology in epidemiology we'll be discussing that what are the risk factors of this influenza virus and what group of people are at more risk for this virus so it's pregnant women children under 59 months and the elderly people all those scenarios uh, as we all know that uh, micro biological infections or microorganisms may attack body and they are known as the foreign particles so only when you, your immune system is weak then they could cause an infection otherwise that they, they would be el- eliminated from the body through the antigen antibody action done by the immune system so the age group children in their 59 months pregnancy and the elderly people all have relatively weaker immune system as compared to that of adolescents adults 
and the normal people. The rest are there are the list is there is a list of which people may have more ch chance of getting this influenza virus. So it's chronic medical conditions like the cardiac, pulmonary, renal, metabolic, neurodevelopment, liver or hematologic diseases, immunosuppressive conditions such as AIDS, receiving chemotherapy or steroid or malignancy. Healthcare workers are also at higher risk <coughs> Uh, sorry ma'am, acquiring influenza virus. Moving towards transmission. Uh, so it's very easily understandable because nowadays we all are suffering from COVID and uh, the precautions which everybody is taking from the COVID. Though it's BSL-4 virus, comes into the category of biosafety lab 4 and influenza is not in that category but the primary steps which we use as a precaution for COVID are always to be practiced <laughs> because rather than COVID there are certain other viral infections and bacterial infections too. signs and symptoms signs and symptoms are seasonal influenza is characterized by a sudden onset of fever cough usually dry cough headache muscle joint pain severe malaise sore throat and runny nose the reason of including all these points in this presentation was that we were assigned with this presentation and the aim was to make this presentation not in the sense of a student but in the sense of that you are a clinical pharmacist and what are the essentials that a clinical pharmacist should know about this influenza virus so in keep, keeping that in mind I have collected all this information and have poured, in, poured it over here. Now there are certain methods of diagnosing the influenza virus. Its clinical di differentiation is very difficult and um, we can check it through <coughs> sorry ma'am direct antigen detection virus isolation and detection of influenza specific rna by transfer reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction rt pcr now treatment it is as it is a vir viral infection could be treated with antivirals Severe or progressive clinical illness associated with suspected or confirmed <coughs> influenza virus. Clinical syndromes of influenza are pneumonia, sepsis, exacerbation of chronic underlying diseases. <coughs> so we use Oseltamivir, named as brand name is Tamiflu, and it's one of the most used drug all over the world for this influenza virus. The rest are uh, PK MERS, which consists of amanitidine and remintidine. Now, prevention. So, I've told that non uh, pharmacological prevention have been discussed earlier, and now we are discussing the pharmacological methods of preventing this influenza virus. So, it would be the same for all the virus and bacteria infection that is the most famous method known as vaccination and these are the WHO recommendations 
for which group of people should have this now case study in order to openly display the role of clinical pharmacist and his duties in this viral infection what i have planned and given this added this uh, detailed case study and it states that mrs cp a 74 year old woman so it she is elderly present at a at 11 pm and with a 3 day history of productive cough fever shortness of breath and pleurisy portable chest x ray taken in a shows consolidation the right lower lobe of lungs uh, so, and she is admitted to the hospital here are some details about the woman or the patient medic, medical history the drugs which she is taking the vital signs which are recorded now there are investigations which we are planning it would be definitely ecg she is cardiac compromise liver function test c reactive protein urine electrolyte and full blood count sputum cultures blood cultures d dimer urine for bacterial serology and troponin one patient is diagnosed with community acquired pneumonia and treatment plan is as follows now we we'll do nebulization sift trigon iv 1 g od erythromycin iv 500 mg q qds paracetamol per oral 1 g and in oxaparin subcutaneous 40 mg od so these are the plan now how to execute this plan so there are certain sets of several set of, uh, several question set uh, there is very really less time now has diagnosis of pneumonia made and how is severity of illness assessed the first one the second one is what is the significance of these laboratory findings so after reading all these inform questions and the jail da- answers which i have added intentionally because i knew that there won't be much time left to define this case study so ma'am i have explained it over here you may fetch a few minutes and please if you could read it so the, because i am not able to speak more and more because of these hip hiccups please pray for me too so what are the possible interpretation of this microbiological results for the important pathogen and appropriate treatment options for severe community acquired pneumonia and now a pharmaceutical care plan how to carry out this all what are the goals of therapy and how should the therapy be monitored what are the prognosis and potential complications of community acquired pneumonia last one what are the relevant social pharmacy issues in this case and now thank you jazakumullah khaira please remember me in your good prayers ma'am